Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Josh Handelman with the DLCC. All right, so I'm first and have to follow that. So that's, that's great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Josh Handelman with the Democratic Legislative Campaign Committee. Uh, we're the party committee dedicated to electing Democratic state legislators in all 50 states. So, thank you. So, uh, I've been with the DLCC since 2017, but in 2016, I was working with Katie McGinty, our U.S. Senate candidate in Pennsylvania. So, I've worked all over the country, but at the time, I'd never worked in PA. So, there, as we got closer to the primary election, I asked our field director about early vote strategy, absentee ballot chase, that kind of stuff. And his answer was, yeah, we don't have any of that here. See, in Pennsylvania, the entire election's conducted on one day between like 7 a.m. and 8 p.m., no early vote, really restrictive absentee ballot laws. And the Republican majorities in both legislative chambers wouldn't and aren't changing that anytime soon, especially if it would help people in blue cities like Philadelphia and Pittsburgh vote while dealing with jobs or kids or whatever. So as you remember in 2016, Donald Trump and Pat Toomey narrowly won in Pennsylvania. It's not crazy to think about how a week of early voting might've helped our numbers a bit. Because when we win, State legislatures where critical changes like election reforms are actually possible. So a great example is 2017 in Washington State. Uh, Republicans had a one-seat majority then in the state Senate, but if we won a special election, Democrats would control the Senate and with Governor Inslee in a House majority have a trifecta. We had a great candidate in Monka Dingra, but it was her first time running for office, and I think it's atypical in Washington to have national attention on their state Senate races. So we worked with Monka's campaign to refine her message, build up her budget, and create a field plan. Monka won. And over the past couple of years, Washington has passed automatic voter registration, gun safety legislation, banned gay conversion therapy, one state legislative seat, real change. After Monka's great win, we kept up in 2018, flipping seats across the country, and I'll share some lessons we learned along the way. So first, nothing would have been possible without more than doubling our budget from 16 to 36 million. This cycle, I think we're going for 50 million, and we can do it. So yeah, sustainable funding growth, but allowed us to, to respond to some really big new challenges. So first, we need bigger data. Since 2016, the DLCC has been the only organization to track and model every single state legislative race in the country with a partnership with our Chicago friends here at Civis Analytics. It's a huge undertaking, but it needed to be even better. We grew our data team last year, and the result was flat out the most predictive information available on who would win a state legislative race in chamber. Uh, we were more accurate than DPI, more accurate than 2016 election performance, and uh, more accurate than just regular polling. And we provided that information to our partners, driving millions in spending to the most critical races. I can't say this with enough emphasis. Even now, not enough money goes to winning state legislative races. In most states, state legislative Democrats are heavily outspent by Republicans. Spending efficiently on the most critical races is key. Next, when a thousand volunteers working with some of the people in this room showed up for GOTV in a state Senate special election in Delaware, we knew we had to change the way we staffed campaigns. That level of energy is wasted if candidates don't have bigger teams ready to pull way more walk packets and supervise phone banks. We funded extra staff for campaigns across the country earlier in the cycle to help harness that energy. Lastly, our campaigns were bad at the internet, and I mean everything. Fundraising, social media, organizing, advertising, the works. State Senate campaigns run the gamut, right? From multi-million dollar state Senate races in Florida to state house districts in Montana that are smaller than a city high school. Sometimes our campaigns can have big, fancy digital teams, but some are just too small for that. We grew our digital team to mentor staff across the country and conducted trainings that improved measurable performance to get big impacts from small budgets. More of that is absolutely needed. And it worked. We flipped eight chambers and over 400 seats. We made gains all across the country. But here's the most important lesson from 2018 and what we need in 2020. The strategy to win state legislatures is not to do well at the top of the ticket and the wins just filter down. Our races require a unique and individualized approach. In 2018, you focused your budget, your expertise, and your voices on state legislatures. If that goes away, we're gonna lose. And, we've, and with redistricting coming up, that would be a disaster. Because in 2020, we have incredible opportunities. 
We could end years of, of Republican control in Arizona. We could have a new trifecta if we win the Minnesota Senate. Pennsylvania Senate Democrats were in a super minority in 2016, but we could have a majority in 2020, and then they could fix their terrible voting laws. We came together for state legislatures in 2018. Keep it up, and we'll win some more in 2020. Thanks for having me.